talking about, about eh? eh? I'm Pierre Bruneau. And I'm Barb Higgins. Today we are talking with psychiatrist Dr. Schnoz about old timers. Oh, I mean Alzheimer's. Oh. Uh, isn't Alzheimer's just old people being forgetful? I don't know, but I think it's more serious than that, eh? We have Dr. Schnoz here with us today, live from Winnipeg, and he's going to tell us more about Alzheimer's. Welcome, Dr. Schnoz. We're glad to have you on our show to talk about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is actually the most common form of dementia. As of today, there is no known cure for the disease. Many are familiar with the disease and aware that individuals will lose their memory. However, Alzheimer's is more than being forgetful. Alzheimer's patients cannot actually store new information, in addition to being unable to recall information. I did not know that. Many people do not realize that an Alzheimer's diagnosis cannot be certain until an autopsy is performed. Before then, doctors can only diagnose based off of patient history, clinical observations, and various other neurophysiological assessments. What? Scary! Yes, that's a fact. Over time, there is cerebral atrophy in specific parts of the brain. During post-mortem examination, doctors will look at the brain tissue at a microscopic level in order to give a definitive diagnosis. Oh, bless their hearts, that must be horrible. Oh, oh yes, Alzheimer's patients can have serious depression, paranoia, and irritability because of their condition. Also, the life expectancy following diagnosis is approximately seven years. Fewer than 3% of individuals live more than 14 years after the diagnosis. Now, do you have a greater chance of developing Alzheimer's if a family member had it? That's a great question, but there is no straightforward answer. Most cases of Alzheimer's are sporadic, but some populations are at a greater risk. While there is not a definitive, pure genetic link, research shows that persons possessing certain alleles have an increased chance for developing the disease. All in all, 400 genes have been tested for genetic component to the disease with largely ineffective results. Oh dear, what can we do to prevent this horrid disease? That's a fantastic question. While there's no sure way to prevent the disease, studies show that individuals who follow a balanced diet that promotes cardiovascular health show a markedly lower chance of developing Alzheimer's disease. Aside from lifestyle factors, is there a greater chance of certain people to develop Alzheimer's disease? In the Alzheimer's population, there's a much higher prevalence of the disease amongst females. Research shows that 17% of women in the U.S. over the age of 65 have Alzheimer's compared to 9% of men. Also, the prevalence of disease increased exponentially with age. This could explain why women have a higher prevalence rate than men because they live longer. Interestingly, patients who have endured head trauma or individuals born with Down syndrome have a greater chance of developing the disease. What age would you expect to be diagnosed? Now, there is no specific age of diagnosis. A diagnosis before the age of 50 is extremely rare. There are two types of onset of the disease. In the early onset, patients are diagnosed before the age of 65, and in late onset, patients are diagnosed after the age of 65. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Snaz, for all that very scientific information. We now have another expert joining our panel. Dr. LaDonna Burns, an expert in Alzheimer's, who will give us examples of symptoms and behaviors in patients who can be diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Thanks for having me on the show. Sometimes you'll see Alzheimer's disease portrayed in television and film, but it may not be an accurate portrayal. For example, in the movie Away From Her, Mrs. Fiona Anderson is struggling with the symptoms of Alzheimer's. Like Dr. Schnauz discussed earlier, forgetfulness is one of those symptoms. Please tell us a little bit more about the character of Mrs. Anderson. Well, Fiona is in her mid-sixties, and she comes from a rural part of Brant County in Ontario, Canada. Woo! A fellow Canadian! Hey! Yes, she and her husband Grant have lived in their home for nearly 20 years. Her husband, a former college professor, has noticed her cognitive decline over the past few years. He reported that some of the early symptoms she displayed were forgetfulness, as well as misplacing objects. This is 
typical of many with Alzheimer's disease. She's displaying a disturbance of her executive functioning, one of the four areas of cognitive decline. Her husband also reported that she had trouble recalling words or the meaning of words. When I look away, I forget what yellow means. But I can look again. Sometimes there's something delicious in oblivion. Fiona is displaying aphasia, or a disturbance of language abilities. Anybody like some more? Mm. Have a touch of wine. Yeah, Fiona, that'd be lovely. Some more Wayne. When did we move into this cottage? Was it last year or the year before? No, just longer than that. It was when I left the university, 20 years ago. Shocking. Oh dear, she looks so confused. But how can someone know the difference between forgetfulness and Alzheimer's? Mm. Well, that's when a medical professional comes in and can provide testing to determine if a patient really might be suffering from Alzheimer's. There are a series of clinical assessments that we can administer to patients. We monitor the results over time, and with this we can make a thorough diagnosis. And if there was a fire in a movie theater? And you were the first person to spot that fire. What would you do? Well, we don't go to the movies much anymore, do we, Grant? All those multiplexes showing the same American garbage. You see my coat? There it is, sir. It's on your chair. Here Fiona was administered a test. She became flustered and charmingly tried to avoid answering questions. She was displaying some fear over her inability to find answers. Fiona exhibited cognitive decline over time as evidenced by her assessment results. Although an official diagnosis cannot be given until an autopsy is performed, I am fairly certain that Fiona is suffering from Alzheimer's. I see. Alzheimer's patients also have trouble with remembering the sequence of events. I found a letter on the street, addressed, with a stamp on it. What would you do with it? I'd mail it. And where would you put it to mail it? Now, is Fiona able to live independently? Well, after consulting with her husband, he and Fiona made the decision that she would function best in an assisted living facility. Many with Alzheimer's disease are forced to weigh their living options. Fiona was very fortunate that she had a spouse and living facilities close at hand. I'm curious as to how accurate you'd find this movie to be. <clears throat> this movie is raising awareness by providing a fairly accurate portrayal of Alzheimer's. However, Fiona's diagnosis is not exactly accurate. The movie states that she's young for her diagnosis, but since she is older than the age of 65, she would actually fall under the more common late onset category. Is there any hope that others with this disease will improve? One of the saddest parts of this disease is that patients will undergo continuous cognitive decline until their death. That is why it is imperative that we continue to research this disease. We must find a cure. This has been a sad topic to cover, but I think it's necessary that we help get the word out on what to expect. Absolutely, and on behalf of Barb and I, we thank you for being here with us today. And once again, a big thank you to Dr. Schnoz for sharing his knowledge on this topic. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we interview Honey Boo Boo and Mama June. That should be loads of fun. We can't wait to see you all right back here tomorrow on What, what Are You, are you talking, talking About, about Eh? eh?